guys, CP Modi here back with another mini review of the ASRock Z370 Pro 4 motherboard. A motherboard that is kind of interesting, so we'll definitely have to check it out. Our mini reviews are short, sharp, and mostly to the point, but speaking to the point, let's jump into the video. Kicking things off with this video, we'll take a look at the design department, and the Pro 4M from ASRock keeps things nice and simple. In fact, a little bit too simple for the price point of this motherboard, which will be a common theme for this video right right here. With an all grain black design, it should go well with most components, allowing the components to stand out rather than the motherboard itself. With an all black component set and this yellow audio divider that kind of stands out like a sore thumb and some silver accents over the chipset, again, it's super cheap, super clean and should do you just fine for most builds out there. Though one thing I did want to note is it's kind of bare looking. Look in the PCB area in this B-roll shot, doesn't look like there's much going on with this particular motherboard. There's also to a small heatsink on the left side of the MOSFETs, which is not really going to do you too great for overclocking, as these MOSFETs and the VRM area in general is going to get yourself a little bit cooked if it doesn't have some decent cooling. In terms of specs for this guy, we are looking at the Z370 chipset in the ATX form factor with the 1151 socket. We've got two PCIe 16X slots, three PCIe 1X slots, and a PCI slot for those of you who still need those old school slots. We're also to looking at three M.2 slots, two of which are for actual storage and one of which is for a Wi-Fi antenna, six SATA ports and four RAM DIMMs supporting up to 64 gigs of DDR4 RAM. Now speaking of that memory, it also too supports DDR4 ECC memory support, so if you want to get in there with some ECC goodness, go ahead and do that, but make sure your CPU supports it, otherwise you can't really run with it. IO wise, we're looking at five USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports or originally USB 3.0 ports, one USB type C running in the 3.1 generation specs so you're not getting the full speed right there and we're also to getting gigabit ethernet powered by the Intel Gigafy L219V chipset. Audio is also to on here with the 7.1 audio setup powered by the Realtek ALC892 codec. Power wise I did mention that this guy is looking a little bit on the cheap side and that is to well be expected carried into the power delivery system. Whether you're looking at an AMD or even a Z270 board they all have much better built actual uh, VRMs and even some of the more budget stuff from last generation have much better looking VRM systems. Sure, the components themselves on the actual motherboard aren't too bad in their actual quality department, but the fact that they don't have any cooling over them is definitely going to be a major sore point if you're trying to get yourself some decent overclocking. It does feature some super alloy power branding right here with DigiPower to help with better power control, but if you can't keep your power delivery system cool, you're not going to be able to deliver any power there. Though even on top of this, do note that some Z370 boards are actually not able to supply enough power to the new 6 core i7 chips, resulting in slightly lower speeds and slightly less performance in games and synthetics than what a lot of people are actually finding. A lot of early reviewers and people who get their hands early on these actual particular motherboards, like myself, have actually found that a few models of motherboards out there are actually showing that under full load they can't supply enough power. Now I wasn't actually able to fully test this in depth with this particular motherboard, so I can't exactly comment on it for sure. Sure. However, it does look like an actual software limitation, so if you are buying this motherboard, do yourself a favour, grab yourself a BIOS update, and this problem will be 100% solved. In fact, by the time this video comes out, I wouldn't be surprised if this problem is patched, and by the time you can grab your hands on these motherboards, I wouldn't be surprised if they're coming with the BIOS out of the box that just flat out works. But it is one thing to keep in mind if you are an early adopter of this platform, you may want to watch out for some of these results, as some of the CPUs out there from some actual fairly big review sites are finding some variations in the different motherboards they use and it can only be brought down to the power delivery of these particular motherboards. So do keep that in mind. But overall, power delivery on this motherboard, whilst the components are decent quality, they're not really cooled that well and kind of looks cheap and tacky for a such an expensive motherboard. And speaking of being cheap and kind of tacky, when I was building this board, things did fall into place, but I did really feel that this board just didn't deliver the high price tag I was expecting. I did find things like SATA fell right into place and there was enough room around the CPU socket thanks to the fact there was no cooling on the VRM that I could fit my big hands in there and actually work on the screws and uh, stuff like that. Front headers was also too in a pretty good location 
information and fairly simple to plug in with no sort of bits and pieces here going wrong. It was a shame that there was no USB-C front header, but seeing that we don't even get a cooler on our VRM, I'm not expecting anything out of this motherboard. But the thing that really kept coming back to me time and time again was just, it felt cheap and it didn't deliver my $250 price tag experience that I would have expected out of a motherboard. For reference, a couple years back I was able to buy an X99 motherboard which was actually fairly high end for the same price, around $250. That thing delivered me a ton of super high end and premium experience and with this the plastic kind of felt cheap, the lack of heat spreaders just made the overall appearance of the board look like a cheaper and lower spec part, the grey colour scheme just didn't work for me and overall it didn't deliver me my $250 experience, in fact it's actually going for more than $250 Australian dollars in some locations, so it is a bit of a turn off there. Honestly, if I was just to straight up look at this board and guess the price, I probably would have guessed around $100 to $150 maximum, just the fact that this board looks so plain and lacklustre, it just didn't really have any premium features that stood out like any other boards on the market. We've already checked out a couple of boards from Gigabyte which you can find linked right up there and also too we'll have a few more coming down the line and if you just watch those videos and even just look at the b-roll themselves you can see there's so much better quality components and just better nicer and looking designs uh, than what you will see over here on the ASRock front. Don't get me wrong though this board worked just fine and delivered a decent user experience once it was up and running. It just looks a little tacky and a little cheap and honestly if I was dropping 250 of my dollars on this particular motherboard I would drop it on something else really, really fast. On the plus side, this board does deliver a neutral colour scheme and it does feature three M.2 slots with one left over for a uh, Wi-Fi card if you do want to do that. And I couldn't think of another third positive thing. Honestly, it really just wasn't a board for me. On the downside, the board feels and looks cheap, especially when using it, and the price tag unfortunately just doesn't reflect it. Uh, it's also too really not that jam-packed. It kind of feels empty for this size of a motherboard. It was nice to have antenna knockouts for Wi-Fi cards on the back, but it also too begs the question for $250, why did it A, include a Wi-Fi knockout without the actual Wi-Fi card, and B, if you're going to not include the card, why include the knockout? It just doesn't exactly make that much sense there. It also too really just doesn't stand out from the market. Looking at a lot of other sort of mid to premium motherboards, they stand out whether they'll be through LEDs, through uh, metal reinforcements on their slots and covers and stuff like that, or just a really cool and unique design such as the tough motherboard from ASUS which we'll be checking out in the next video. But overall this guy just looks plain and sort of simple and really doesn't do anything to stand out from the crowd. Price wise, as I did mention, it comes in at 250 Australian dollars and and it is definitely a high price for an entry level Z370 motherboard. I really do hope that prices come down for this particular motherboard as it does make up the entry level of ASRock's motherboard lineup. Don't get me wrong, ASRock makes some really good looking Z370 chips and motherboards, but as an entry level part for $250 is really just not getting my cash out of my wallet anytime soon. I did touch on this board comes in at a relatively high price and doesn't exactly do that much and again that grey colour scheme really just doesn't and do it justice right there. Whilst the board gets it done, it's just not getting it done at a $250 price point. It feels cheap, it just doesn't really have that premium experience that I would want again from that $250 motherboard. Sure, at the end of the day, it works well and can do some basic overclocking, but if you are going to be pushing this thing, pumping a whole bunch of voltage through this board, it's definitely not going to stand up here. But again, it is okay, but is okay really okay for you? So I guess then that moves us on to who is this motherboard for? And I'd have to say no one really. Even if you're on a budget and want to get into the Z370 chipset family, there are so many other motherboards that deliver so many more features, a better price point, or so many more features and a better price point than what we're getting out of this ASRock motherboard. Whilst I really don't like not recommending a product after spending all this time doing a video, the more and more I use it, I just can't really recommend someone dropping this kind of cash for a motherboard that really doesn't stand out or do anything too much here. Without a whole bunch of heat sinks and stuff, it does look a little bit tacky and a little bit on the cheap side for the price you are paying. And definitely if you are going to get subscribed to the channel, you'll find actually a number of videos that we do have coming down the line on motherboards in the exact same price point, offering way more features, a way better design, or again, more features and a better design at a lower price point. But let me know, would you drop $250 on this particular motherboard that resembles like a $100 bargain based 
replacement motherboard that they spent two minutes designing and chucked it out to the market. Would you put your 500 plus dollar Australian uh, actual CPU in here or would you pick up something else? Let me know down below. If you really want to pick up this motherboard, I've left a couple of links down in the description box. But otherwise, guys, thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.